So how far back does half netting go? Half netting, allegedly, and yet there is a lot of proof, goes back to the Vikings. And it was the Vikings that brought it to this part of the world. Uh, the length of our oars is 17 foot, which we know that the Viking oars were 17 foot. And so we presume that they used the oars initially to, to make the nets. What they fished with then, uh, what they had was uh, two sticks that came down from the 17 foot oar with a beam in the middle, a stick in the middle, and they would tie a net on it, and that net would be what they used, although the nets that they used then were hessian. They weren't uh, the modern day nylon that we've got now. But other than that, there's very, very little changed apart from the clothing that we now wear, and uh, the way that we carry the fish, we carry them in bags now, whereas they used to carry them on ropes. Attached to around the necks and to the beams. I understand there's problems with modern restrictions in with half netting. Why is that? Well, the modern restrictions were brought in by the Environment Agency. Um, the Environment Agency, over a period of time, have had influence of the riparian owners on the River Eden, who have also sat on boards uh, with regards to the environment agency, the, the fish and the salmon that actually enter the river and the river systems. Uh, and a lot of riparian owners think that, that the half net has damaged uh, the fish stocks on the River Eden especially. And do you think that? No, if I, if I thought that then I wouldn't fish. Um, we had a study compiled by the uh, Penrith University who, who found that, that the River Eden cannot hold any more stock of salmon and sea trout than it currently does because there just isn't the breeding grounds for any more fish than what it currently holds. Do you think there's any financial implications to the campaign? Uh, yes, in two ways really. Uh, the campaign against us, uh, I personally feel that it, it was done uh, so that the riparian owners could get, gain a financial uh, step up in, in the, the prices of what they would charge fishing on a river that didn't have any nets in the estuaries. Uh, obviously, you know, when restrictions come in on nets, uh, they think that more fish would, would get up the river to, to their stretches of river, so they charge more for fishermen to fish them days. How long ago did the campaign actually start and what do you think the outcome will be eventually? Oh, well, oh, I think, I think um, the campaign against half netters has been going on for quite a lot of years, around about 20 years that I know of. Um, but the last five years now where the restrictions were brought in, where our timings, where we can only fish between 10 in the morning and 10 at night have been far too severe and it's been very detrimental to the half-netters themselves. We've had a lot of half-netters that have just packed in all together because of work commitments and things like that. So whereas in, in days gone by it was a, a working man's uh, hobby, if you, if you put it that way, where we could make a few extra quid, it no longer applies because a lot of uh, people that do go half net and have jobs and they rely on their jobs for their livelihood and hence they can't fish because of the, the time that we're restricted to in 10 in the morning and 10 at night. And often even with them restrictions we can't fish because you don't often get a tide that runs in them between 10 in the morning and 10 at night. They're either you know 9 in the morning and 9 at night, in both cases you, you miss both tides. So realistically, what sort of quantity of fish are you half net has actually taken out of the Solway? Well, we haven't had we haven't had the uh, data for the last two years, but the Environment Agency wanted to restrict us to 1,500 fish a season. However, since they brought in these severe restrictions, we've never been anywhere near 1,500 fish. In fact, I think the most we caught was three years ago 
where there was something like I think it was 795 fish caught. Whereas you know on the rivers are, are up to a thousand eight hundred plus. So what about licensing? I mean, are these limited to how many they're actually granted? Yes, there's only we we could actually take out 105 half net licenses on the English side of the of, uh, the Solway. It there used to be a lot more than that. There used to be 350 as little ago as 20 years ago. But now we only currently take out, I think it's around about 84 to 85 licences that are actually currently taken out. And all of them licences are now issued to lads that do it as a sport rather than uh, commercially. There's not many commercial fishermen on, on the Solway now. In fact, I probably am the last commercial fisherman among them because they just can't make a living it anymore. Whereas I have a restaurant where the fish that I catch, you know, are turned over and turned over in my restaurant as meals. And that, that makes a good viable commercial business for me. So as a well respected local businessman um, with quite a popular restaurant, um, would would your Solway salmon or fish that you catch be missed by the clients that oh, have to come here? Yeah, this well, time of year. Yeah, greatly. It's it's a big selling point for me this time of year is the Solway salmon because uh, and the sea trout when the sea trout's in season. But I, I would like to feel that you know people enjoy. Uh, I think you, you know they put a thing on it now where they call it the carbon footprint. Well, there is no carbon footprint because. It's caught a matter of a couple hundred yards away from from the pub, and then you know it, it's caught there and brought here and cooked and served as a meal. You know the you know and people enjoy the freshness of the fish, which is something that you can't get anywhere else. You know I mean it's basically caught the same day that you eat it, which you, know, you can't get anywhere else. You you go to supermarkets or even fish shops and things like that. You know a fish does not come that fresh uh, and people appreciate the freshness of the fish and the taste of the fish. It's quite unique really. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of people, even older people in the late generations really that have said you know they've had salmon all their life but they've never tasted salmon quite like what they get out the Solway here. So what's going to happen to the half measures then eventually? Do you think the campaign will succeed or do you think they'll squeeze you out? I, w I would like to think it would succeed and that, and that we could get some form of heritage status because we are the last place in the world that has half netting. There's nowhere else in the world that does it except the Solway on both the Scottish side and the English side. But I feel with the restrictions that the way they are that more and more people are retiring and, and just packing in all together and there's not a lot of incentive for young ones to come in anymore except the sport of it. Whereas locally, because it's been passed from fathers to sons, there is still that strong bond where they feel they've got to fish. However, I don't believe that it happens where people from the likes of Carlisle and things like that, where you know they hear about it in the pubs and things like that, and think, oh, I would like to try that. Come and try it, it doesn't happen anymore. So the only youngsters that we've got coming through are, are local people. So essentially the propaganda that's being put out is that the half netters are actually stripping out the Solway and stopping fish getting through. How many men would it take to actually go right across the Solway <laughs> from edge to edge? From, from edge to edge is a mile and a half. Right. On a, on a, and that's on a, a small tide. On, a, on the high tides you would have to go from from grass to grass, which is it's just over two miles. Uh, so when you think you've got 17 feet, you're talking about 800 men. So that kills that fallacy straight away. Plus, from six men in on both sides, the rest would be drowned. Right. So in your experience, you haven't seen 800 men spanning I've, the I've, Solway. I have seen, the most I've ever seen on the, on the Solway for a draw, was 24 and that was nearly five years ago the last time I've seen a draw as big as that. I've never seen a draw like it. Uh, a draw is where you know we all stand in line and, and 
the fish on the line, but you can only do that in the shallower waters of, of the estuary, not in the deeper waters of the estuary. Uh, even then, out of 24, there were six went home because they knew they would be able to fish that day. So Mark, how would you solve the problem? Do you think there's a problem? And how would you protect the Solway? Well, well firstly, I don't think there's a problem on the River Eden or the River Esk. They're both very uh, fertile rivers and, and both very clean rivers. So, hence the reason why we've got so many brown trout in the River Eden, because the trout just don't go back to sea. There's that much food within the river systems. Uh, the salmon always do well in our rivers, uh, it's a, it is a good breeding river and has been for a number of years. We've been noted as the second most prolific river in England for a number of years now. Um, personally, I don't think there's a problem with the rivers. I personally think the, the problem comes from inaccurate readings that we've been using over a period of time. Like, take for instance, egg deposition. They've been taken, counting the fish by egg deposition. Well, not all the eggs survive. And the best way of, of uh, counting the rivers and seeing how, how many fish and what a good year you had is by smoke counts. Uh, we have now started smoke counting again, but we stopped it for a number of years. But a lot of these current restrictions that were brought in were brought in because of the environment agency's data on it which was based on egg deposition rather than the, the smolts that had actually been born. However, I don't personally think that there should be any reason for um, the, the restrictions that have been brought in because I think there's enough salmon and sea trout getting up the rivers for to breed. But uh, under the current system that we've got, which is an EU system, we have a tagging system for the fish. I would personally like to see where we have, if they wanted to restrict it to 1,500 fish, then them tags should be distributed among the fishermen, and then there is your, your, your basic, you can't catch any more than 1,500 fish because you've already issued that many tags and that's it. Uh, however, I, I feel not like today's restrictions where the tags are, are given to one man and at the end of the day he's got to send them back. I think they should be flexible, whereas if a man can't fish or he's, he's not catching fish and he's got a few tags left, he should be able to distribute them so that other lads can, can catch the fish, especially if, if he can't fish for work reasons and things like that. Um, that would be, that would restrict to the 1,500 that the Environment Agency wanted us to restrict to, uh, that would be a lot fairer way because uh, people that worked during the, the hours, they could then fish during nighttime hours or early morning hours when they're not at work. And it would be a lot fairer on, on everybody and, and the whole fishing system altogether. So who is actually against this? Are we talking about central government, the environment agency, are we talking about local people or is it a combination? Well no, not really. I don't think it's done because these are local restrictions that have been local bylaws that have been brought on by the local environment agencies. Uh, the local environment agencies, not the current ones that are there now but off past, have been influenced a lot by riparian owners to bring in these restrictions. However, we don't hear of many more restrictions on the, on the, the fishermen themselves, especially the riparian owners. Um, we know that they, they brought in, uh, I'll give you a, a, an example, that they took the mere fishing off, off the half netters because they didn't trust us to put fish back. However, they're quite willing to let a fish be caught on a rod and say, well, you've got to put it back because you can't keep it. Well, for me, if, if a fisherman's been fighting with a fish for 20 minutes in the river system, and that fish then comes to him while it's, when it's tired, that fish has less chance of survival than what a fish that has just swam into a net, which could easily be turned right back over and carry on swimming. Up the, up the river system, it wouldn't have any damage whatsoever. So that just shows you the, the imbalance that you get between uh, the rod fishermen and the half netters. 
So in actual fact, every fish that swims into your net isn't actually kept and caught. You are actually grading or choosing or saying this isn't right to keep this fish and, and it gets put back into the into the river system anyway. Yes. Yeah. What what happens? I mean a lot of fish that we do catch, in fact the bulk of the fish we catch we don't keep, likes of flounders and players and flukes. Uh, they get returned and they live quite happily. Uh, Grey mullets, we don't keep many of them. Uh, they get put back into the system. Um, we have net sizes so that uh, the small sea trout and the small salmon get through the nets. They don't get caught in the nets, they, they escape through the nets before we can lift them. A salmon entering our nets isn't immediately caught. The, the, the net has to be raised and lifted above the water and then scooped in by the half netter before he's actually caught the fish. Just because a fish has swam into the net, it's not then caught. The, the, the fisherman has to be able to get that net out of the water as quick as possible so that he can catch that fish. So you do get a lot of fish that swim into the nets and swim right back out again because the fishermen weren't quick enough to get them up. Where is the best place to catch the fish? In the shallows or in the deep or it really doesn't matter? Well no, we have we have a saying which, which I believe is true after the times that I've been fishing is on an ebb tide, which is an ebb, uh, an ebb tide is a tide that's receding we tend to fish as deep as you can because fish swimming back to the sea tend to take the deeper water and swim hard in the deeper water to get back to sea however on the fluke tides they tend to come shallower because they're trying to taste the fresh water and uh, they're trying to find their rivers so that they can enter the river systems. We basically fish in an estuary and so you've got a mixture of salt and fresh water. So that's why the salmon come in a lot shallower looking for the fresh water of the river system that they're looking for. So if you had to sum up why uh, a campaign to stop half netting isn't necessary, what would it be? What I would say is is please come half net and see what an expanse of water is and not every fish follows the same line. All fish will swim at different levels, different depths and we basically don't catch the fish that, that are reportedly uh, banded about by the people who think that we, we catch every fish entering the river. We don't, we don't catch anywhere near that. We, scrape the surface in reality and I would like anybody that's got any doubt whatsoever about half net uh, we're not the killers that we're proposed to be I would like to see them come try half net and just have a look and see what the, the, it, it entails and just to see that we aren't any detriment to the salmon whatsoever So is there a strong um, local uh, committed group of people that are trying to fight this campaign to, to, to close you down? The, to close us down? No, not really. I don't, I don't think it's as strong as what it was because uh, a few years ago we set up a trust uh, which was aided uh, by Lord Bal Balamoni from Charles Hockey from uh, who, who won a court case against uh, James Carr and donated some money towards uh, our trust fund. We set up a trust fund which is called the Solway Half Netters and Salmon Conservation Trust. Now this trust has been set up to help the half netters but also help the salmon in the river system and we don't want to use the money that we've currently got fight the environment agency over more and more restrictions that they're trying to bring in. What I would like to do is to put the money into scientific uh, studies on the rivers so that we can all enjoy the sport of, of salmon fishing. Thank you very much Mark and if you'd like to enjoy fresh Solway salmon you can find it at the Highland Laddie in Glasson, Cumbria.